now Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda. The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his fiancée, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, Jungle of Terror. I, uh, suppose you know what you're doing? You've said that a dozen times now. I'd be more comfortable if you didn't keep phrasing it as a question. Suggestion noted. I can hardly see a thing in this cloud cover. That was the idea. I'm flying on instruments. And you know how to do that? How hard can it be? Don't kid. This is dangerous. I thought you enjoyed dangerous. There's danger and daring do. And there's flying blind somewhere over the Amazon jungle. And you say I never take you anywhere. Boss! The message we received was far from clear, Kit. Captain Tom Sunlight is one of the world's best-known adventurers. He doesn't yell for help from halfway around the world without good reason. Until we reached the coordinates he sent us, I thought it best if we approached by stealth as much as possible. Do we have any idea what that old barnstormer was doing in South America, anyway? Life of an aviator, I suppose. He would probably tell you that he goes where the winds take him. He's not that corny. Everyone is that corny when they're trying to impress a pretty girl. Yeah, are you jealous? In advance? No, but I am serving notice that I am prepared to be so, on little or no notice. Ah, that's both sweet and stuffy. I love you, too. Captain Sunlight is an old friend. If he is in trouble, we had to come. And you do owe him a favor. Yes, I do. Because he flew our old pal, Professor Von Schlitz, into the side of a mountain at your request. Yes. Because the nasty Nazi tried to murder me. I'm not proud of that. Why do you dwell on it? It ain't a dozen roses, but a girl can't be too picky. We're getting close. I'm going to drop down out of the clouds. Roger that. Oh, boss! A remarkable sight, isn't it? I've... I've never seen anything so beautiful. It just goes on forever. Yes, Kit. The Amazon Basin is one of the most remote and unspoiled places in the world. Don't see a lot of runways, though. Well, no... Tom's message said there was a small lake near these coordinates. Wait, you're going to land this plane on a lake? Yes. A lake with water. Are you all right? Would you mind if I step outside, boss? I think I might glide down. Empty. Then this is my chance at last. If I can just get a sense of what these madmen are working on. These plans, they look like some sort of technical schematics, some kind of of harness for... They're closing in. Not again. Not now. How can I... Ah! The radio. Attention! Attention! This is Dr. Raymond Dort broadcasting. Any emergency personnel, can you read me? Anyone receiving this transmission... I wish to send a message to the American Embassy in Buenos Aires. Can anyone read me? No. I might have known. We're getting closer. It isn't possible. If I can just set up a repeating pulse through this radio equipment. There. That should do it. And now I'll smash the receiver. Good. Now I just have to get out of here before... Are you sure the plane isn't going to float away? I'm reasonably sure, yes. I don't much like the sound of that. I've never secured an amphibian before, but it seems solid enough. (sighs) Sorry, I'm just feeling a teeny bit out of my element here. The urban jungle appeals more? Well, there's less chance of being eaten. There is that. Come on. If that was another plane we spotted from the air, it should be right around this bend. Right. Whew, boy, the 
This jungle looks a lot friendlier from above. <laughs> you can barely see a thing through that canopy of trees. Boss! What is it? I thought I saw something above the treetops, just for a second. Like a bird, but... But what? It was... It was too big. It was probably just a trick of the light. You said yourself you could hardly see. I guess. Come on. We're nearly there. I only wish Captain Sunlight had been able to give us more information. Well, the signal was pretty weak. Mm. If you didn't have equipment set up to monitor that super high radio frequency, we'd never have gotten it at all. What is more troubling is that we have no way of knowing if he received our return transmission at all. Four days ago, he was in serious enough trouble to call for us. Who knows what might have happened in the interval? Boss! There it is, over there! Careful. We're not even sure that's Tom's plane. Down this bank. We'll approach near the water line. Right, boss. Squirrel. He is one of Sunlight's planes. See the insignia? I see it all right. They must have been in one heck of a scrap. This ship's torn to ribbons. It certainly is. But I don't think this damage was sustained during any sort of aerial combat. Even Tom Sunlight couldn't have landed a plane that was this badly damaged. You underestimate me, old friend. Though on this occasion you happen to be right. Tom! Captain? Kids? I see you got my message after all. We were starting to wonder if anyone had ever come. Who the heck? Oh, that's right. You never met my junior flight patrol member. Chip, this is the Flying Squirrel. Gosh, very glad to meet you, ma'am. Er, uh, Chip. And you remember the Red Panda, of course. Gee, I sure do. Good to see you again, sir. And you, Chip. I'm pleased to see you both looking better than your plane does. How did you come to find yourself in a spot like this? We were on something of a rescue mission ourselves. We weren't on the ground more than an hour when our plane was wrecked. The radio was smashed to bits. I couldn't dial in an emergency frequency or signal our headquarters for help. But I still had the key you gave me that would tune in your secret radio band. I'm just glad to see it worked. As am I. You say you were on the ground before your plane was destroyed. That's right. We'd better take care that that same thing doesn't happen to yours, or we'll be stuck here together. Well, I've got a real keen solution to that. Let's all pile in and get out of this spider hatchery. Can't do it, Squirrel. We came in response to a distress call of our own from Doc Dewart, an old friend who is completing some mineralogical surveys of the mountains. He's still missing. But if your plane was deliberately destroyed... How much gas does your ship have? Enough, but not much more. Chip will fly it a few miles over that ridge. There's a small lake there. He can wait for my signal. Oh, but Captain, I want to stay with you. I can help. I know, Chip. But if anything happened to that plane, we couldn't help ourselves, much less the Professor. We're all depending on you to keep that ship safe. Gosh. All right, sir. You know best. Atta boy. Squirrel, you better go with him. <laughs> oh, no. You want to drag a 14-year-old boy out into the jungle? That's your problem. I didn't come all this way to babysit him. <laughs> I thought he would babysit you. Boss, tell the nice man what happens to people who try and send the women folk to cover on my watch. Trust me, Tom. You wouldn't like it. Maybe she'd change her mind if I showed her, huh, Captain? <laughs> All right. Showed me what? After we found the plane all wrecked, we pulled this out of a hole in the fuselage. What is it? It's a tooth! Impossible! It's, <laughs> it's too big! What kind of creature has teeth that huge? I don't know. But whatever it is, it's out there, waiting for us. <laughs> My dear Dr. Dewart, you have led us on a merry chase. I would not have thought you had it in you. You, you... Am the last one left? Yes, it is no matter. The other team returned to my laboratory nine days ago. They will return shortly, but you will not live to see them, I am afraid. You, you are a monster. There is a saying about stones and glass houses, I think, yes? You have killed four of my men. Scientists engaged in important work. Scientists? You who are not worthy of the name. And now I see you have smashed my radio. Valiant, but useless. I should be angry with you if time were convenient, but time is not a luxury you have much of now that my little pets have had their fill of you. Pets? Th these creatures are not... I know what they are. And if you had not preoccupied yourself with something as pedestrian as a radio, 
You might know just what they are capable of. You see, they can be controlled, Herr Doctor. They are perfect killing machines. They awaited only the arrival of their master, and they have found him at last. Professor Friedrich von Schlitz! <laughs> Just keeps getting hotter, doesn't it? Not regretting coming along, are you? You know, I hear Paris is lovely in the springtime. It is. And they say Morocco by moonlight is not to be missed. I've heard that. And yet here we are in a jungle rescuing someone we don't know from something we can't see. In a nutshell. You're lucky you're easy on the eyes, you know that? Thanks. I think I hear Tom coming back. That was quick. Don't sound so disappointed. Well, I didn't mean that. Uh Uh-huh. The map coordinates that Dr. Dewart sent me are just over this here ridge. It's all clear, but Chip and I couldn't make heads or tails of the message. Uh, what was it? Stand in the doorway when the sun threads the needle. Step up. It's just a little cryptic. Sure you heard it right? It was Morse code and sent fast. However, he sent the signal. He must have been in a hurry. Here. Uh, this is the place. Uh, interesting. Rocky plateau. Strange lack of vegetation. Open jungle to the east and bare cliff face to the west. We searched all over that cliff face for a hidden door or cave entrance of any kind and found nothing. Boss! What is it? See that rocky point on top of that cliff? The top end has a hole in it, like a needle. Yes, and the sun should reach it at any moment. We noticed that. We've been back here for the last four days at this same time, waiting for some kind of opening in the rock to present itself. Goose eggs. Then where are you going? To the cliff face. If I'm lucky? If we're right in thinking that this doorway and the message is in some way a time-specific event, we can't afford to go over the same ground again and again. But the cliff face is the only solid surface nearby. Yes. Lateral thinking, Captain. We might have only a few moments. The sun's almost to that rocky point. If that's a needle, something should happen soon. Nothing has before. Boss, what about that stone archway? Over there. What about it? It's just a shape left in the stone by erosion. There's nothing on either side for 30 feet. But look. See how the barren patch seems to radiate out from this side of the archway? Almost as if... What was that? It was... It was like a rush of hot air from nowhere. Not exactly nowhere. The lenses in my mask are going haywire. The infrared spectrum. And something else... An energy I've never seen. There is definitely more happening here than meets the eye. I don't see anything. Exactly. I think our door just opened. Ridiculous. I can see both sides of that arch. I can see straight through. There's nothing there. It's interesting. Wait here. Boss, where are you going? The message said step up. And so... Boss! Red Panda! Incredible. He just vanished right before our eyes. Boss! Can you hear me? Where are you, boss? Hello. You! Oh, you scared the life out of me. Where'd you go? You should really see this. Both of you. Come on. (sighs) Red Panda! What is this place? It's impossible. The topography, the, the landscape, it's completely different. To say nothing of the vegetation. Where are we? No idea. Very far from where we were a moment ago. And that's not all. Boss! Look out! Ah, yes. Did I forget to mention the dinosaurs? You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. They're gaining. Head for those rocks. I'll cover you. Did that do any good? If it did, would I still be running? It's an interesting point. Boss, look out. I've had about enough of this. Cover your eyes. What? Do it. What? They're moving off and fast. What was that? 
Flash grenade. Lots of light, lots of noise. Ah, how many of those do you have on you? Counting that one? One. Swell. Any idea where we are? Or how we're supposed to get home? I was out of ideas when we found that... Whatever it was, it closed behind us. We could assume, for the moment, that the gateway will reopen tomorrow when the sun reaches that same rocky point. And how are we supposed to know when that is? We're on the wrong side. Dear me, am I the only one who thought to look at his wristwatch? Since the opening of the gateway was signaled by a rush of hot air through it from this side, we have a general idea of what to look for tomorrow. And in the meantime, what were those things anyway? Dinosaurs. I know that's what he said, but really. I'm no expert, Squirrel. I can't tell you the exact species, but I know several tons of extinct carnivore when it's at my heels. I don't know how, where, why, or even when. When? Ugh. I hate time travel. It might not be as simple as that. Simple? The miniature energy scanners Dr. Chronopolis designed for me aren't picking up any temporal displacement. Something very strange is going on here. You think? Boss, look, up in the sky. What in thunder? It's a pterodactyl. An ancient flying reptile. Don't be afraid. We're a little large for its tastes, though we should keep moving. Those carnivores will be back, and soon. Boss, that's what I saw through the treetops earlier. On the other side of the gateway. A pterodactyl, I'm sure of it. Well, that's encouraging. Encouraging? That means some of these monsters have made their way to our world. It also means the gateway has opened more than once, which improves our chances for a return trip. <laughs> this place is huge. How are we supposed to find your friend in this? I don't know. If he could only signal us again, I could home in on him with my miniature radio tracking set. If he sent his Morse code message from this side of the gateway, waiting until the moment he knew it would open to allow the signal to pass through... He might have transmitting equipment on this side. I'll scan for radio signals. Well, if we are a million years in the past, you should get great reception. There is that. Strange. I get nothing on any band, not even background signal, except on an ultra-high frequency. And that's just a regular repeating pulse. That doesn't sound good. And it doesn't mean it's Dr. Dewart. It's a place to start. And if they've got a radio, maybe they've got doors, too. It'll be night soon, and we're out of flash grenades. All right, then. Let's get moving. This is it. The signal is definitely coming from inside this cabin. No lights. Do you hear anything, Squirrel? Nada. Just our big scaly friends off in the distance. I'm going in. Stick close. Right behind you. Empty. Not quite. Over there on the floor. It's a man. It's Dr. Dewart. Doc! Doc, can you hear me? He's hurt bad. Bad? Bad enough, young lady. Doc! Tom, you got my message. You came. We'll get you out of here. Too... too late. Uh... Doc! Dr. Dewart, listen to my voice. Listen to my voice and open your mind to mine. Your mind to mine. Yes. What do you think you're doing? Look at his wounds, Tom. We can't save him. We don't have time to argue. Doctor, can you hear me? Yes. The pain has lessened, Doctor. As if it were happening long, long ago. Listen to the sound of my voice and help us to avenge you. Yes. <laughs> the gateway. Did it bring us back in time? No. No. Uh, bubble world. Bubble world? The uh, control room map uh, on the desk. Here it is, boss. This map will lead us to a control room for this? This bubble world? Yes, uh, but be careful. I... Uh, he will be there. He who? I found the gateway, but he was already here, already plotting. <coughs> Blueprints. Blueprints. I... I can't. I'm sorry, Captain. He's gone. He must have held on for hours. 
hoping against hope that someone would make it in time. Maybe someone did, Tom. Boss, them plans any good? Good. They're spectacular. Telepathic and empathic receptors and amplifiers built right into the harness, wired directly into the central nervous system. Incredible. A boss, plain English. Whoever discovered this place before, Dr. Dewart, can only be planning one thing. To capture and control dinosaurs like those carnivores that hunted us before. To turn an army of ancient dragons into a heavy cavalry the like of which the world has never known. I don't understand any of this. What did Doc mean about a control room, and why would anyone put one inside a cave? I'm hoping we'll find out soon, Captain. And that we'll find whoever is behind this terrible plot when we do. And when we do, remember, he's mine. I make no promises. Come on. You hear that? Some sort of machinery in, in this chamber up ahead. Great Caesar's ghost! What is this place? I didn't think anything could top the dinosaurs, but this... I've never seen anything like this. This technology is incredible. More than telepathic harnesses to control dinosaurs? Yes, much. That technology is at least... What? Human. Possible. Pick one. This machinery is obviously ancient, but still works. It seems to be... To be alive. Alive? Yes. It's brilliant. It's the only way that machines could be made to run for untold millennia. A self-renewing crystalline structure. Incredible. But what does it do? I couldn't even begin to say. These devices are like nothing I've ever seen. How can they be ancient if they are so advanced? It's interesting, isn't it? This here, this looks like... I mean, it's configured like some kind of projector array. It seems like this is set up to interrupt the effect of the rest of these machines in a predetermined way at a predetermined time. Like what? Like opening a gateway to our world every day at the same time. You are very clever, Red Panda. It took me days to work that out. Friedrich von Schlitz! No, thank you. No sudden movements. The rounds in this gun are designed to bring down the largest and most aggressive of dinosaurs. I do not imagine they would have much trouble with even the great Red Panda and Captain Sunlight. Oh, how I wish the two of you could see your faces just now. Hello, Von Schlitz. The eye patch suits you. And a limp. Very stylish. So charming are the heroic adventurers. You see, your plans to murder me failed. Well, if at first you don't succeed... Carefully. After the plane crash you arranged failed to destroy me, I wandered through these jungles, badly wounded. I stumbled upon the gateway to this bubble world... It was sheer good fortune that I chose this cave to hide in from the beasts without and discovered this master control room. I knew how great the fortune was and the depths of the prize I had found for the Fuhrer once I understood what this place truly was. You think we're impressed, you murdering scum. What is that? Oh, I take it you found the late Dr. Dewart. It would perhaps be exaggeration to call that murder, but no matter. The Red Panda knows I deserve the term, don't you, masked man? I haven't forgotten, but I won't let that vendetta get in the way. You won't deliver your prize to your masters, Von Schlitz. Swarms of Nazis riding telepathically controlled dinosaurs over every corner of the globe. It's a nightmare. Indeed? Perhaps. Certainly the leadership is most interested in mastering these beasts. But when that project is complete, my real work can begin. Look around you, Red Panda. You know I did not build all this. Do you not wonder who did? No games, Von Schlitz. Not a single one. This place, this bubble world, can only be one thing. A laboratory. One created long ago by creatures, men, if you will. From another world. That's insane. Not at all, my dear Captain. It is the only logical answer. I cannot imagine what experiments they wished to run on what was then the newborn world of Earth. Only that the vast distances of interstellar space and the time it took to traverse them meant that they wished to maintain a controlled environment, as any good scientist would. So, they created this bubble outside of normal time. 
until they could return. Return? But of course. If either of you were an educated man, you would see that the language on the control panel bears a great deal of resemblance to certain ancient cuneiform script. It seems these... these aliens have exerted more influence on this world over time. And when I truly understand this technology... You will have caught up to where our spacemen were millions of years ago. Bravo. I grow weary of your flippancy. You forget that you are quite helpless. I'm hardly ever helpless, von Schlitz. You are thinking, perhaps, of avenging your partner? Actually, I thought I'd let her do it. What? Surprise! <coughs> the flying squirrel alive! But how? The boss knew it had to be you the minute he saw your designs. And he knew we had an ace in the hole. You weren't expecting me. <coughs> 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 All done? One more. <laughs> now what? One thing is clear. However much we might have to learn from this place, it cannot be allowed to fall into Nazi hands. Tom, tie up Von Schlitz, would you? Roger that. What you doing? Von Schlitz is right. This script is very similar to several ancient languages. And unless I miss my guess, I can read them better than him. I'm trying to reset the gateway controls. But, Moss, why would these moon men build a door that opens every day? Elementary thermodynamics. Within a closed system of a limited size, the heat energy would build and thermal death point would long ago have been passed. Opening a vent to our world helped to prevent that. I'll take your word on that. What do we do? Hmm. I think I have an answer. But you and Tom need to leave first. What? Leave where? <sighs> leave there. Captain Sunlight? We're going. Roger that. What about him? I'll take care of him. Go on, we don't have much time. Boss? I'll be right behind you, I swear. You'd better be. Come on, Tom. What? What are you doing? Giving you just what you wanted, Von Schlitz. An unlimited opportunity to study this equipment. You cannot destroy the gateway. This world will die. I don't intend to destroy it. When this gate closes, the controls will reset. Instead of one thermal exchange point large enough for men or beasts to pass through, there will be thousands scattered over a vast distance and each only a few inches wide. You cannot leave me here. Of course, there's always a chance you could reset the controls after I'm gone. But this thermite charge on the control panel should prevent that. I'd cover your one good eye if I were you. No, you cannot do this. I will kill you for this, Red Panda. Goodbye, Von Schlitz. No, I will be revenged for this. I will get you for this, Red Panda. Friedrich von Schlitz spares it! And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 45, Jungle of Terror, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Tim Vant, Christopher Mott, Kevin Robinson, M. John Kennedy, Clarissa de Nederlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>